Here are the top 10 financial principles that you won't learn in school. What did you study in college that was relevant to your personal financial situation? Credit? Investing? Money management? Or did you only enroll in the classes that were required of you in order to receive your diploma? For the vast majority of students, these courses were largely inconsequential, much like calculus and astronomy or the study of anthropology. My level of dissatisfaction with the amount of information that was not covered throughout my education has increased proportionately with the amount of time that has passed since I graduated college. Everyone in the world tells us to get an education and a job and then everything will be fine, but things aren't that straightforward. If you want to be successful in the real world, you need to know a lot more about money than what you will learn in school at any point in your life. Personal finance is the cornerstone upon which every success story is built. Here is a list of the 10 most important rules that everyone should adhere to in order to be ahead of the game with their finances. This will save you the hassle of having to learn from your own mistakes, which can be a stressful and time-consuming process. Grab a piece of paper and a pen because we are going to teach you the 10 most important rules about personal finance that you'll never learn in school. Just a quick reminder to hit that subscribe button before we get started. In addition, the notification bell icon which will ensure that you do not miss any of our videos. Let's begin! Number 10. Tips for Purchasing Your First House it is likely that you are familiar with the common saying that, if you want to buy a home, you need to save up to 20% of the value for a down payment. In the event that you do not, you will be required to pay private mortgage insurance, which may put a significant dent in your finances. What you won't learn in school is that the financial trade-off between paying more money now and waiting to save up the 20% deposit could be worthwhile. Although paying higher mortgage payments may be painful, waiting to save up the money could be worthwhile. When we look at the macroeconomic factors that have been at play in the United States over the course of the last decade, we see that the rate of appreciation of real estate has really increased, but the levels of wages have remained the same. Since the value of the home is only going to skyrocket over the course of the years, it is unrealistic to start saving up 20% of the home's value right away. The guiding principle behind this is that you should only proceed with this option if you are confident that you will be able to comfortably save the necessary amount of money within the next five years. On the other hand, if it will take you longer, you will be chasing a moving target as the prices go up. Number 9. Save, save, save. At least 10% of what you earn should be put away in savings as you will learn in school. But let's not beat around the bush. This won't get you through retirement. Unless, of course, you are making millions of dollars every year. A respectable savings percentage ranges from about 25 to 40 percent for the majority of people who receive regular paychecks. We are not suggesting that putting away 10 percent is completely pointless. Rather, it might be an excellent beginning pin to build up that savings muscle. If you want to save more money, cut back on your expenses and any costs that aren't absolutely necessary. Rather than spending that money on a cup of coffee each morning, you should consider putting it into a savings account that offers a higher interest rate. Number 8. Emergency Fund It's possible that you've never heard of an emergency fund during your time in school. However, you should count yourself fortunate that you have us to educate you on the subject. According to the most recent statistics, up to 40% of Americans do not have the financial resources to cover an emergency fund costing $400. This is a concerning statistic that merely demonstrates how people fail to recognize the significance of having an emergency fund. What would you do if you found out you were fired today? Would you have sufficient funds to cover all of your expenses? The general rule is that you should have enough money saved up to cover your expenses for at least 6 months, but we are recommend increasing that number as much as you possibly can. Number 7. The Foundations of a Budget 
Despite the fact that having a budget and sticking to it is quite important in life, you won't learn anything about it in school. Unfortunately, if you do not understand the fundamentals of budgeting while you are still in school, you will be at a disadvantage once you graduate from school, particularly once you move out on your own. The inability to properly manage one's bills and make a clear distinction between one's needs and wants can put a person in a position where they are forced to endure one challenge after another. Everyone needs to be able to plan a lifestyle that can be maintained with the money they bring in from working. This entails having an understanding of how to plan for all of one's bills while at the same time ensuring that there is sufficient money left over for essentials such as savings and groceries. But let's be honest, despite the fact that sticking to a budget is critical, nobody enjoys keeping tabs on each and every penny they spend. Instead of doing that, what you could do is something that is known as tactical budgeting. In in order to accomplish this over an extended period of time, budgets and plans need to be developed. For instance, you could keep track of what you require each month and compile a budget that details your necessities, desires, and the associated costs for the upcoming three quarters. Following the creation of the plan, you will be able to divide the amounts into the appropriate accounts so that you do not go over your allotted spending money. Then, if you need to get back on track occasionally, you can consult your list. Number 6. Compound Interest the effectiveness of interest occurring at a compound rate is probably the best kept secret. Time is the one thing that every young person possesses that gives them an advantage over everyone else. When it comes to investing, they have an advantage over others despite the fact that it may take some time before they reach their monetary objectives. All that is required of them is to make use of the potential benefits of compound interest. Young people can amass significant wealth over the course of their lifetimes if they begin early to save a little bit of money in an account that offers a high rate of interest and continue to do so throughout their lives. An excellent illustration of the significance of compound interest is provided below for your perusal. Suppose someone presented you with two choices. The first option is a choice between $3,000 and a penny that will increase in value by a factor of two every other day. The majority of people, right, would go with the first option. You most likely did as well. If you did the math, however, you would see that the second option would be worth $10 million after only 30 days. If that is not sufficient to convince you to start taking advantage of this incredible opportunity to grow your wealth, then I don't know what will be. Number 5. The Ins and Outs of Credit the majority of young people, almost immediately after getting their first credit cards, end up using them up to their maximum limits. They then find themselves mired in a lifetime of debt during which they are compelled to pay off enormous sums of interest, and in some instances, this leads to late payments which can have a negative impact on their financial situation. The majority of people are unaware of the significance of credit scores and the necessity of continuing to build a positive credit history. However, if schools place a greater emphasis on training students in this life skill it is likely that they would already be aware of the secrets. The following is information that is necessary. Your credit score is one of the most important aspects of your overall financial health and it is a primary factor that is responsible for determining your financial standing as an adult. If your credit score is good, it will be much simpler for you to buy a home, get a car, get a loan for your business, and it will also make it much simpler for you to achieve other milestones in the future. The significance of credit is no longer something we can ignore. Everyone needs to be aware of how to properly build their credit and maintain a good score at all times. The following are some helpful hints regarding how to accomplish this goal. First, you need to get a credit card. The vast majority of people are under the impression that getting a credit card is a bad idea. But in reality, having credit cards is an essential part of building your credit score. Permit me to illustrate this point with a story about a friend of mine named Kevin. Just like a lot of other young adults, Kevin put off getting his first credit card for as long as possible after he graduated high school. Doesn't sound like a big problem, right? But when he started looking for a home to buy and a car, he was unable to get any loan approved because he hadn't established a credit statement yet. When you apply for a credit card and use it, the financial institution keeps track of all the transactions you make on the card as well as the interest payments you make. They will assign a score to your name that is based on how productive you have been. When you go to apply for a loan, that score will be used to determine the maximum loan amount you can get and the interest rate you will pay on that loan. 
Two, you should never be late paying back your debts. If you owe money today, you absolutely must make sure that you pay it today. There is no other way around this. Number 4. Guidelines for Insurance Policies If there is anyone who relies on your income for support, you should seriously consider purchasing life insurance. This person could be either your child or your spouse or even your parent. It is advisable to purchase a term policy rather than a life policy because the former provides coverage whenever the latter is required. If, on the other hand, no one financially relies on you, you can cancel the policy and save the money. Obtain insurance coverage for everything, from your car, to your home, to your business, in addition to your life. This includes your health as well as your automobile, home, and other expensive assets. You also have the option of purchasing umbrella insurance, which provides coverage for multiple policies and ensures a discount if purchased from a single insurer. Before deciding on an insurance provider, it is important to shop around for the best deal by comparing premiums and coverage options offered by various providers. Number 3. Taxes Since taxes are such a broad subject, they are hardly ever covered in classroom instruction. If you want to stay on the right side of the law, it is essential to have a solid understanding of how things operate. Find out how much money you will have after accounting for taxes and calculating the tax rate before you receive your first paycheck or make any sales from your business. This will allow you to better plan for your financial future. This will assist you in determining whether an employment opportunity will meet your financial needs and what the appropriate pricing strategy will be for your goods or services. You're in luck because there are a ton of calculators available online that will do the grunt work for you. They will show you the amount of your gross pay, the amount that is owed in taxes, and the amount of money that is left in your account, which is also referred to as your take-home pay. For instance, if you live in Manhattan, New York, and earn $35,000 per year, your take-home pay will leave you with about $26,399 after deductions for various taxes. Pay attention as well to the marginal tax rate that applies to the increase in your salary. For instance, if your annual salary goes from $35,000 to $41,000, you won't receive an additional $500 per month from the increase but $345. It is important to get into the habit of preparing your own tax returns because there is a lot of inaccurate information and poor advice available. Be careful. Number 2. Watch out for your health. If you do not have health insurance, a trip to the emergency room for an injury such as a fractured knee could cost you thousands of dollars. What will happen if you end up in the emergency room if you are having trouble paying the monthly health insurance premiums that you are required to pay? It's possible that in order to pay for your medical bills, you'll need to borrow money, which will put a burden on other people who had other plans for their money. Doesn't seem very reasonable, does it? If you don't already have health insurance, you should get some as soon as possible. Taking care of your health can also end up saving you a significant amount of money in the long run. This includes consuming the appropriate foods, sustaining a healthy weight, regularly engaging in physical activity, and avoiding excessive consumption of alcoholic beverages and other addictive substances. Protecting your health now will save you from having regrets in the future. Number 1. Acquiring student loan debt is not an absolute necessity. In spite of the widespread belief that obtaining a college degree necessitates taking out student loans, this is not actually the case. You do not require the former in order to obtain the latter. 85% of recent college graduates are dissatisfied with the substantial amount of money that must be set aside to pay off their educational expenses as soon as they begin working. It is not always necessary to get these loans in order to pursue higher education. There are educational establishments, such as Davidson College in Charlotte, that offer assistance to students so that they do not rack up excessive amounts of debt. Other schools provide an excellent education at a tuition cost that is a fraction of that of private schools. You could also go to school on a part-time basis, work while you're studying, enroll in a school that is less expensive, graduate from high school earlier, or start your academic career at a community college. However, we are not suggesting that everyone should make paying off their student loans their top priority. In certain circumstances, it might be beneficial to do so. If you are on track to begin a career that will provide you with a very high income, then a few thousand dollars shouldn't be an obstacle for you. However, you should not make the assumption that having debt is a primary reason for being a college student. There are a lot of routes you can take to accomplish your professional objectives. 
We hope that you are able to take away some useful information from today's lesson. If you are still on this page, I will assume that you found the video entertaining. If so, please give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Stay tuned because we regularly upload new finance videos on topics from personal finance to stocks, bonds, and trading.